Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to our Tour de France analysis, review, commentary. Today we're covering stage 10, and while we're doing that, we're going to be playing an old favorite of mine, Turmoil. Haven't played this game in years now, so I'm a little rusty, uh, but we'll go ahead and get that going in the background. The stage today, flat as a pancake. They, re they moved up the west coast away from the Pyrenees this time. And along that coastline, we're looking at uh, a situation where uh, crosswinds were expected. They're coming off a rest day. There's always that threat that some people take that rest day and their body just doesn't react well to it. And they come out with really, really tense legs. Not the case here. Not the case at all. Uh, everybody seemed okay on the legs today. But coming off a rest day in this tour means something much more. COVID-19 testing. So today was a big testing day for COVID-19. And the good news... 4% share. We want to make sure. Oh, wow, that came out early. Dang. Yeah, somebody just uh, spent a lot of money for that. <laughs> oh, well. And I wonder. It's only a 5% share for them. Anyway, uh, the entire Peloton. 100% of them tested negative, which is wonderful news. Uh, it was a real worrying point. A lot of people thought that the tour would be over. The riders weren't the only ones tested. Their teams were tested as well, their support teams. And there were some positive tests there. Uh, the rule was two. Any two from one team, and the whole team goes home. There were positive results. Uh, four or five across the peloton all from different teams though so zero teams have been sent home everybody's still there so that's fantastic news uh one outsider not tied to the teams but a member of the the inner workings of the tour has tested positive and it's a major one on this one christian prudhomme the race director the race director who drives around and takes all the vips who aren't being properly tested, somebody has gotten Christian Prudhomme sick. So he tested positive. He's asymptomatic at this point, but he still ultimately tested positive. Uh, that uh, is major, major news as he will have to sit out for a week. So we're going to get our feelers out, get going. I have not played this in a long time. It's going to take me a little bit of getting used to once again. So the race itself starts. Now, of course, the big talking point was whether there was going to be big crosswinds or not. And, well, when they started, it was 12 kilometer per hour winds. Not, uh, not major. Right from kilometer zero, Stefan Kung and Mickey Shar uh, attack together right off the front and easily, easily get away. You know what? We can actually sell at a dollar. Don't mind selling some of that. Our mole is still out there searching. So bring in a little more money. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's also grab a silo squeeze it right next to there okay price is already coming down a little bit so we're not going to do this too long up over 800 gives us a little bit of money to work with all right down to 83 let's go ahead and start this next process all right we're obviously going to need another wagon with this Uh, so they get away easily. However, they're not allowed to just ride away. Uh, in fact, at 
the the largest point, they only had a minute 20 gap over the field. That's that's pretty small. <laughs> that is quite small. So uh, it was definitely setting up to be a day where the sprint was was going to be from the pack. At 100 kilometers to go, they hit crosswinds, do kind of quick step, immediately ups the pace. The break with that small gap was caught almost immediately. And also with the increased pace, we see splits in the field right away. A few kilometers into this acceleration, big crash right in the middle of the front group. Ten riders down. It creates another split behind it. And the chasers, who had just been split off the back, it covered most of the road. So they got caught behind. And see, we are nearly full now. Uh, and still not in a position to really sell anything. The price isn't good. We don't have a whole lot of money here. Uh, let's go ahead and get our prospector at least out again. Uh, our mole never found anything over here. But I do think my screen is rather bright right now from the sun. I do think we did find some uh, natural gas right in here. Oh, shoot. Okay, so we have to take an empty line to get to that one. Once this is empty, we can uh, get to that. But we are full. We are full. We've got nowhere to go. Uh, and we don't have the money to do anything else, so we're going to have to sell maybe one, no, not one each direction. Uh, right ink is going up in price, and actually I do want to free this up at some point. So let's switch this to the right. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That was close. We almost went bursting at the seams. All right, found more to the right. Don't have the money to necessarily do anything. Oh man, we in trouble. Oh yeah, in trouble. It's all down to prices. That's just not good. Anyway, the crash held up the chasers, but a little while later, uh, for one thing, they they got out of those crosswind sections just a bit. And we're barely keeping up at this point. Okay, well, we can at least put together this. That'll help. That'll help, because we're only sending two at this point. It's over a buck. We can at least send three, I guess. Can't handle the capacity right now, anyway. Wow, this one's already emptied, which means we can at least move on to this line. Saved us some money. Uh, the race neutralized a bit, and that allowed everything to come back together. So they continued on for a while like that, and at 64 kilometers to go. Uh, yeah, this price is not looking good right now. Let's drop this down a little bit. Just take one for now. It looks like the left is on its way up. Uh, but we only have so much storage space here. It's already middle of May, so we're almost halfway through the year. And we're, we've tapped into the oil on the right. I'd like to know what's going on with this one. You know what, why don't we expand this so it's going to go a little faster. Get the last of that oil out of there so we can go tap into this natural gas. Let's set this up. Hopefully that's not part of the pocket. Alright. This way... As soon as we tap in, we can then link it up here. Uh, we are nearly full, so we're going to have to start doing something. And this seems like the logical sell point for all at the moment. Let's 
after it all came back together at 64 kilometers to go, we had another crash, and this one involved some of the race favorites. Pojakar, Martin, Sprinter, Cockard, all caught up in it, many others as well. Uh, it was coming off a tight traffic circle. Right before it, we had a, a series of large traffic circles, big bridge that they had crossed, another huge traffic circle, wide open spaces where they were able to essentially fly through there. And there you go, we have tapped out on this. All right, so we're into it. We're gonna lose just a little bit of that. Can we close this off? Why are you going that way? I want you to go this way. There's a way to turn this off, isn't there? I don't remember. That was already all of it. Oh, we just upgraded that line inadvertently. That's what happens when you haven't played for a long time. Okay, we're going to go back over to the right. Looks like we already went through all that. Get the prospector out again. Start revealing what's out here. Now, that crash, uh, it does come back together. Those guys were okay. They, they get back into it, so so not a big deal. It took a little bit of time. There was pretty good gaps, uh, but the field was not pushing that hard, so they ultimately were okay. After it came back together, we had the intermediate sprint, which was contested by Trentin, Sagan, Bennett, Cockard. They were the ones that were aggressive on that. Trentin goes across first, takes 20 points. Sagan, second. Really good intermediate sprint for him, as he's somebody who does not normally... Uh, contest that and uh, let's go ahead and set up a new rig for this one uh, Bennett cross the line third really did not look like he was pushing he was saving energy for the sprint at the end of the stage that's 17 points for Sagan 15 for Bennett so the seven point lead at that point was at a virtual nine points they go along like this, neutralized, no break for a long time. But at the last 20 kilometers, they're going to hit another uh, crosswind section. We see the immediate acceleration. And there's something. That's rock. Oh, this is a deep one. Oop, there's more rock. Uh, let's get the mole over here. Figuring out what's going on with this. Uh, you know what? Let's 750. Let's drill through rock. There we go. Got it. Tapped in. Uh, price is way down and neither side is high so let's go ahead and start storing this only 4,000 and it's September I think we've got a lot in here let's up all these guys we can get what's left in there with that immediate acceleration we begin to see splits again four kilometers into that acceleration we find Martin and Lopez separated in the second echelon. But then another crash in the front group, so a third big crash of the day, uh, separates things further. Also makes it difficult for that chase group coming through, but this time it didn't block the road. So Martin is able to bridge the gap alone within two kilometers. Lopez, who had been distanced by Martin from that group, then finds his way back another kilometer later. So all the contenders back into the front group and things kind of settled down with none of the contenders behind. The winds weren't that strong. It, it was enough. It, it split things. It thinned the group out, but all the contenders were there. So everybody kind of just backed off a bit until we got to three kilometers where the sprint teams took over from the GC teams leading things out. 
Sunweb was the first to go. Seven riders leading out Case Bull. And during that last three kilometers, they pushed hard. And they continued to push hard. Uh, it's already October. Let's get these guys going. And we are almost full. It is time to make some money. We're going to go four to the left, one to the right. Let's cash in. So, uh, Sunweb, it ended up being a little too early. They pushed a little too hard, even though they had that many riders, which is what I normally do on a PCM. But uh, it was too much, and Case Bull ended up alone at about 450 meters to go and then had to try to attack from there. Did not work out for him. He finished about 8th place, I think. Uh the sprint with that ended up isolating a lot of riders though and the last one the only one who ended up with a proper lead out was sam bennett he had one man left but that one man set him up perfectly bennett ended up literally second wheel to his teammate so he was the front rider at that right time and uh We're barely keeping up with this here. Uh, we got way too much action on the left now. Let's put it all on the right. It's going to lower that price, though. Bad timing on this. But we've got to cash in. It's already been middle of November. Definitely not ideal play through here, but that's what happens when I'm distracted and, and, and talking. Anyway. Uh, Bennett gets that perfect lead out and at that point it's hard to beat one of the fastest sprinters in the world who went at the right time he was not the quickest though he ends up hanging on by mere millimeters to the guy who really is the fastest at this year's Tour de France which is Caleb Ewan Caleb Ewan has been phenomenally quick today not his day though he came from too far back and Bennett with that perfect lead out just nips him at the line to keep, hang on for the win. Ewan takes second. Sagan, though, fantastic day for him. No, he doesn't win, but he's not the fastest sprinter. Today was a pure sprint stage. He gets second on the intermediate sprint. He gets a comfortable third on the final at the stage. Now, Sagan played it smart. He really wasn't contesting the sprint. He was behind Bennett. And he just stayed behind Bennett until the final meters where he finally came out from behind him and went half a wheel up on him right in the last 15 meters as Bennett was just starting to fade. So Bennett, 50 points with the win. Ewan, 30 points for second. Sagan, 20 points for third. Now, Ewan, he, he hasn't been contesting the points jersey this year. So that didn't matter. Huge gap, though. Bennett gains 30 points on Sagan here. So that 9-point lead, well, it flipped. 21 points to Bennett, now in the green jersey. But not a bad day for Sagan. Not a bad day at all. Bennett, obviously, with the win, is huge. And that's why he's got that jersey. But Sagan had a good day. Nobody else was close to the line. Viviani was way behind in fourth. And then a large gap to fifth place from there. The others who were in contention in the points classification, Van Aert. Van Aert didn't score any points today, didn't contest it. Cockard went way too early. He went at like 800 meters, but Sunweb swallowed him up. And so Cockard didn't feature in the finish. Trentin, even though he won the intermediate, didn't feature at all at the finish. And so... We're really looking at a breakaway now in the points with Sam Bennett in the lead, 21 points ahead of Peter Sagan. And it really, yeah, it, it's any man's jersey, at least for those two. Here's why. Tomorrow's another sprint stage. Stage 19 is another sprint stage. Stage 21, obviously, the Champs-Élysées is a sprint stage. There's three sprint stages left, which means Bennett has... A lot of chances to continue to outscore Peter Sagan. He could win this jersey. 
But then, of course, you look at Sagan and you go all the other stages other than stage 11 tomorrow and stage 19, the last sprint stage, or stage 21, the time trial, or stage, uh, sorry, stage 20. So 19, 20, 21, right? The last sprint stage, the time trial, and the final stage where you figure Bennett's going to outscore Sagan on those days. All the other days, Sagan could and or should outscore Bennett, especially if he gets himself into breakaways. And we always know, late in the tour, the breakaways always have a better chance of surviving. So is there going to be a stage where Sagan not only gets intermediate success by being in the break while Bennett isn't, but could he survive in a breakaway? Maybe not win a stage, but take sixth place or something like that and score a few extra points at the end as well. They're not going to be the 50, 30, 20 kind of stage, but there's points available. So Sagan's got a real shot. Bennett's got a real shot. This points jersey is going to be exciting to the finish. It could be decided on the final stage. It really could. That's going to do it for this review, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to continue the conversation, do so in the comments below. Highly encouraged. This, albeit not what we normally see on the channel, it's been working out. Uh, the, the last episode, two days ago, Good viewership, good commentary uh, below, so I do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.